Art. Whoa. Oh. Recording in progress. What in the name of Jesus is that? And it's, well, it's, def it's definitely going to the cloud, or is it? I think there's a little cloud in the top. I just pressed record. It didn't even kind of give me the option of going like, sure. to the cloud or to the computer. That's all right. We'll find it either way. Recording now. Right. Hello and welcome to this week's Snowcast. Uh, guys, really, really sorry. We know that you were salivating at the mouth for the points and your earwax was tumbling out of your ears at the back of my eyes last week's podcast. Ew. <laughs> what? Ew. Your uh, earwax. I like to paint a picture with my words. But this week, um, we're back on the Zoom this week. We did, we did have a point this week, a sneaky one. But it was just the one. Uh, it was just the one. Um, but what a glorious, glorious one it was. Um, we got great feedback there on the last episode. I think you all enjoyed it. So yeah, um, hopefully one of many more to come of us being back in the pub and having a crack and chatting shit and uh, talking to barmen and talking to bowsies around us. People watching. People watching and people chatting and people drifting. and. Got me with the days where a, a, a Yank and a, and a, and a Scot had wander on to the podcast by accident midway through. Yeah, got to be with the days. Please listen to our back catalogue. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's up a, on those a hijinks. It's pure book, but yeah, we, so we had a fight today. Uh, we, we, we started playing five side every week on a Friday after work just to kind of, you know, I suppose, what's the, the gloom jig? You know, get the old knees going. Get the knees going. <laughs> the glue jig, like. Um, we started playing five side on a Friday, and we had this uh, opportunity today because we finished work, and it was an hour and a half between finishing work and the five side. So we thought to ourselves, sure, like, a point to make us play better. And I thought I did. Yeah, there was a good bit of confidence now out of me. Yeah. Um, and I was trying stuff now that I, I wouldn't have tried only for the point. Yeah, uh, and it, it almost came off as well, a lot of them. Um, but yeah, Jesus, I'm, I'm so buzzing now like for the pubs to reopen fully. Um, it's been great like having the, the few points in places, like, um, or not in places, outside of places. Uh, with maybe a few places are a little bit on the cusp of being indoor or outdoor, but <laughs> the, the less you say about that the better yeah let's not let's not get anyone in trouble no definitely not but uh, and i don't think there'll be anybody i think i think everybody's playing a little bit at it but they're right too um there's 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 massive um reduction in risk with with vaccinations and stuff so um i think uh pubs are kind of salivating to get out there and go yeah. and give their best um and it's just kind of it's just a little bit unfair um, that places that have the kind of outdoor area are able to kind of profit from it now. Um, what about uh, getting out there, on Getting sorry? in there. Whatever getting about getting, there. getting in there. So mm. uh, one, of, one of our politicians was on today saying that the, the 26th at the latest, 26th of July at the latest, yeah. Um, for, the, for the indoors. For the indoors, yeah. I'd say our, uh, our foreigners, listen, uh, are like, what the hell are these guys playing at? How come they're not in a pub? Um, yeah, we're just, just, I don't know, I don't know if it's still the right word, but um, we're more cautious to open back up. And, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, but again, like, What's the story with, with, with opening back up? Is it going to be two meter distancing, six at a table, three at a table, two, so this, one kick, on your lap, one on your knee? The kicking thing is they don't know. They don't That'd know, exactly. What would be a different glue jig now if you had one on your knee? Or one? <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, like the thing is, you know, they'll say X, Y, or Z now, and then in the build up to it, they'll push for more liberal opening up. And then when it comes down to it, they'll rein it back in. Yeah. And we, 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 Jesus, we've danced this, we've danced to this tune 
a half dozen times now since this pandemic began. So look, looking forward to getting back and a high stool having a point. Did I say the 26th on my um, point watch last week? Did I say that I think that they've caved to the pressure? Uh, I think you might have. Yeah, I think you might have said we'll push it a week. Stefan Veralka, boy, we're like that. We're like two peas in the pod. You're, yeah, you're, you're, you're the inside man. You're the <laughs> fella that he was leaking to. <laughs> I, yeah, Leo, Leo the leak. And I'm the hole in the boat. I'm the hole in the boat. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, speaking, of, speaking of holes, did you see... <laughs> Have you seen on the the, uh, the article in today's Irish Times? Um, for 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 listeners abroad, the Irish Times is one of the one of the uh, popular newspapers over here. So I'll give you the headline of the article: uh, Heineken's new stout. Its head is creamier than Guinness's, but does it taste as good? Uh... Now, if you if I was to say to you, Heineken, we're going to come up with a stout. And put it out a mass market. Let's be honest. How bad a name do you think they could come up with? Um, like you think they might go with like, you know, they might just go like Heineken Stout, or they might go, or they might just kind of go like something trendy, like the, you know, I don't know. I, I, stout kind of has to be. Um, like it has to be a name or um, or it has to be like something kind of like Irish kind of like mythological or something you know so, so anyway what what so, did, what have they come up with them so so I'll, I'll tell you what I'll, I'll, I'll rattle off a few names of some quality independent Irish stouts independently brewed Irish stouts <laughs> and we'll see how we, how, how, how we what we think of them so black second sales one world's end Great, right. yeah. Again, right. again, kind of like mythologically, kind of taily, you know that kind of way. It's like yeah, it's kind of Lord of the Rings or you know, yeah, this world kind of job. Like it's kind of a bit fantasy sounding. It's yeah. like the world's end. On that team, twelve acres. Winter is coming. Yeah, same. Yeah. On that team, oh brother, night crawler. Night crawler, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but then like talking then about say almost science fiction or into the like the, the big black universe line man astral grains yeah so these are all like you can see that like you know a nice dark kind of team or the, the ultimate stout name um with brain ulster black yeah um you, you know, have cap, cap, captain's table captain's table uh yanoradi by kinegar yeah they're poor good name um, and uh, Festinuda by the White Hag yeah um, you know the, 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 some quality names there like Panda Nero by, by Brew is a great name for a stout mm. so Heineken with their with their sure Heineken probably have more marketing advisors and, and, and PR people than fucking the name and Ryan and they come up with the name Ireland's Edge Ireland's Edge yeah, Island's Edge, Island's Edge. Island's Edge. That's Island's, nearly worse. I don't know which is better or which is worse. Um, Island's Edge. Right. So I'll tell you a good one, right? Right. Talking about these marketing bowsies and gob does. So in the, in the article in the Irish Times. Hmm. The, 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 the chap, the interviewer, the journalist says to them, why is Heineken releasing Island's Edge, a third stout? Because they own Murphy's and Beamish now because they bought um, those breweries in the past. And the answer from the marketing manager for Stout at Heineken said, we wanted to expand the category to rejuvenate it and offer the consumer a new style of stout. The market had no innovation and was really quite stagnant. We wanted to offer something different to consumers to appeal to people who hadn't considered stout before. Now, let's call a spade a spade. I just rattled off the name of 10 independent Irish stouts that have gone into the market the last couple of years. What sort of shitology are you looking at all together? Eh? 
that's it's so narrow minded, isn't it? That like the the that they're thinking so macro based on the market, um, knowing all too well that the micro breweries or your independent <coughs> breweries are eating into their market at, at the moment at a, at a much better rate and I'd say at a much higher rate I'd love to see now what the what the percentage is post um not put well mid pandemic but because I, I definitely think people were kind of more getting into the um the the independent uh, brewery offerings because definitely like when I went down to uh, Killarney uh, last or no not where was I Dingle sorry when I went down to Dingle um, there recently like there was like way more um, offerings in like pubs and in um, supermarkets and even like just um, just from looking yourself like imagine like say us, like picture us in college right there was nothing in Tesco and there was nothing in Lidl or there was nothing in a Centra or anything uh, apart from your boxes of Coors or your your six pack of Dutch Gold or, you know, um, whereas now like they have a full fridge full of these things on, on offer of the, of, the, of the independent craft beers on offer. So I don't know what Paula Conlon is talking about at all. <laughs> We're calling them Paul and, and the head brewer PJ Tierney. We're calling them out live on podcast. Oh, well, <laughs> yeah, it's in the yeah, article. Um, but I have to, like, do you know what? I'm actually, I, I, I'm going to, like, full credit to Rascals, right? They put a great tweet up today. Um, and, and what I loved about it was the show, like, the collectivistic nature of independent Irish brewing, how they all, uh, row behind each other, support each other, back each other. Rascals put up a tweet and it was a clipping of loads of different stouts that all different Irish independent brewers do. With this quote about offering something different in the stagnant stout market, basically called Heineken a load of shite. Yeah. Which I thought was brilliant. Fair play to Rascals. And I, I said to you before we came on, I know that like, Rascals have a really, really good social media presence a really strong one joe from Askins is often on like tonight uh, the tonight show on, on on virgin media and really prominent and uh, you know he'd be on really prominent um radio shows and tv shows uh, quite often talking about beer and food um you'd see him on the telly a good bit so so like i i think like rascals have a good profile in ireland so for them to call this out and to call it out not by saying look what we have but to call it out by saying, look what we all have collectively. What I thought was a brilliant touch. Um, and and do you know what? Someone offered me a pint of Ireland's Edge. I'd rather fucking take the pledge. Uh, I would. I, I, I'd agree with you in that because I think that um, every, like just by completely um, neglecting to to acknowledge the the independent breweries, the independent brewers, um, with that quote is it's it's actually just really insulting, isn't it? Um, and, and for that I wouldn't. But um, the stout itself, it sounds very um, odd, doesn't it? So there's um, so it says they have um, chocolate malts in it. Um, and roasted coffee so classic what you would kind of um, taste in those like coffee stouts or ch chocolatey kind of stouts or whatever but they said that they're also adding in tea and basil um, so it, they said it's going to have a very very subtle minty aftertaste and um, <laughs> like this kind of hinty hint of basil taste I'm not sure now at all about this. I tell you what, no, <laughs> I I just like there's nothing about this appeals to me. The producer of it doesn't appeal to me. The name doesn't appeal to me. The description of a chocolate and coffee stout with tea and basil as aftertaste doesn't appeal to me. 
the fact that, like you said, the, 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 the shy hawkery, a complete ignorance of the fact that, like, you go on to beer cloud tonight. It's not even stout season right now. Yeah. And you go on to beer cloud tonight and you can order, you know, 17, 18 stouts from all different parts of the country. Uh, it's insulting to, to independent brewers. It's insulting to beer consumers uh, to be putting that shade out there. Uh, um, you'd be a bit annoyed at the Irish Times editorial for publishing that muck. And yeah, best of luck to them. They want to roll out in 300 Dublin pubs uh, over the coming months and then off trade and, and, and the rest of the country. I hope it tanks. I hope it tanks a big, dirty, Debt. I hope it goes right off the island's edge and down to the bottom of the ocean, and never comes back. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to um, at Soccer Stash on Twitter, um, who says the flavor description sounds like taking a sip of a pre-existing stout immediately after brushing your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> As, oh, top notch. But you're no, you're dead right though. Like I, I actually, I wouldn't. Um, I, I I don't think I would be. Um, I, w- I don't think this th- this thing is going to succeed at all. Like yeah, th- these um, macro companies tend to do this quite often, where they they just kind of get bored and they offer out Guinness Light or you know whatever, um, and they all just tank like they all just end up tanking anyway like they have their core range and they are successful in their macro um kind of light tasting beers and like that's what they're being successful at like you know um so i i just i i don't see this one as succeeding at all and it's going to fuck it's just going to fall off island's edge (laughs) well i tell you what right actually i'm gonna i'm gonna steal something from another podcast um Recently, I was listening to a, the New Who podcast with Tomasa Mahuna, and uh, he was talking to St. Mel's Brewery. And um, they were saying, they were talking about, you know, cute whore, Hop House 13, these kind of drinks that we would have drank five, six years ago. It was yeah. actually uh, almost like they described us. And the guy from St. Mel's was saying that looked like, you know, Tomas is asking him what did he, what did he think of those type of drinks and the, the, like you know what did they mean for craft beer? And he was saying that look like leave Diageo go off and and push cute whore and 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 all this kind of stuff and Island's Edge being another one of these uh, yokes where they're trying to get clever with their brewing and trying to push this like you know crafty style um, on people. You made a great point about like, you know, at the end of the day, cute whore got people trying more ales. People who were drinking Hop House 13 four or five years ago are probably now drinking like farmhouse saisons like we do. Um, I bought that Lock of Ore Gorse. Um, um, by Wicklow Wolf, is it? By Wicklow Wolf there today. I can't wait to have a try off it. Um, you know, these are drinks that five, six years ago we probably wouldn't have been brave enough to try. But may, maybe there's a bit of truth and there's a bit of self-denial in us to admit it that, you know, these type of beers play a role inadvertently to the macros in pushing people to try. Like if they say, oh, Heineken are bringing out this new stout, you know, I'll try that. And then, oh, it'll push me to try something else. Maybe there's a bit of truth to that. Like I thought that was a really refreshing, different take on it. That was an angle I hadn't thought of previously. Um but yeah, Island's Age. I th- I just thought it would be a, a, a funny little chat to have today, considering they released that. Um, considering they, they released that uh, article today in Irish Times, it was interesting. Like, but look, like like you said, there's just nothing about it that appeals to me. That that description of, uh, <laughs> is it? Yeah, drinking a pint of fucking Guinness and then brushing the teeth immediately after. Um, yeah, what, we've all what? been there. I, I have a I have a, a thought in my head here now, right? Um, what would you think of if, like, instead of like these big macro breweries going out and trying to create these these new innovative beers, like if they supported 
like local breweries and like took them on contract or something, you know? Oh, but you lose the independence then. Yeah, I know you lose the independence. You lose, you lose some of your autonomy, you know. Uh, but but yeah, I I suppose, I suppose for a beer, like for a singular beer, I'm not yeah. Just just a thought. Um, it's just it's just it's just weird that. I, well, I'm I'm trying to just think from I suppose Heineken's perspective that I think that this um this kind of innovation thing doesn't seem to succeed as much as it does but actually what ends up um what ends up succeeding more so for them is acquisitions and uh, people buying um like franciscan well and things like that that actually from the macro breweries point of view that's probably a better strategy than what they're doing this way possibly but we don't want them to do that though, do we? we don't want them to do it no but i'm just i'm just like I, i'm just it's like what, what are they, yeah i like it when they spit uh, uh, yeah yeah interesting interesting the exact opposite to a macro brewery and i think the business model i would i i absolutely adore i think is a brilliant business model and it's something i'd love to see more of on on this island is the thought the idea of a cooperative that anyone can buy into for a relatively affordable amount. Um, and there's a great example of a cooperative there up the country on, and I, I can see a licking the top of a can of one of them there. Um, mm. our, yeah, our, our, good, our good friends, um, even though we've never met or spoken to anyone, uh, our good friends of Boundary Brewing, uh, a cooperative brewery owned by its members. Uh, isn't that just like, the most incredible business model going. Um, yeah, and I do think I, I do think you're right. I think um, there should be more of that kind of uh, more of that kind of going on, where m- maybe not like solely owned by members, or whatever, but maybe like ability to to pitch in and invest in companies somewhat in order to get benefits. So. I know um, what helped um, BrewDog in the UK escalate so much is that they went and allowed like startup investment in theirs, you know, and that, you know, even with a small-ish investment sum that you get a card off of them and that you get, say, 10% off your points in a BrewDog pub and you also get like, uh, you know, uh, one or two free points on your birthday or something like that you know and um so like you know v- very small token gestures it, uh, um that you know you can kind of invest in the company and allow it to kind of get bigger and grow um and if the company ends up succeeding all the better for you because your investment you know is able to grow as well with that and um, so, yeah, I think I think it's probably something that's missing a little bit. Maybe that little bit of business acumen um, to help those companies who are on the cusp of going from uh, being a local kind of county brewery and are looking to, you know, maybe set up a canning line or set up, you know, expand into. Um, shops nationwide or you know or even look at the export market or something like that that you know it's an awful it can be an awful cost on a brewery uh, to get that capital to to kind of uh grow the business so yeah i think it's i think it's really cool like yeah but as well like what i love about so so we're coming up to the pills and problem now guys that's what we're talking about boundary because we've got a pills by them very serious situation it's a 4.8 percenter. We got this lovely 440 can. Um, it's a crisp, refreshing pills, uh, generously hopped with tetnang, uh, which tetnang. I, think, I think is a like it's a hop. I I don't think I'm familiar with it. I I, I don't like I can't. I've never it, seen it. I I've never I don't remember seeing it, but I definitely it, it gives a kind of unique taste. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll get into the score and the pills are probably in a minute. But I love as well that like. Uh, we, we've remarked on 
every time we've gone to the plinth over the last month or so about breweries cans, how good they look. And this is another part about their business model that I love. So the artwork is by a guy, John Robinson Art, who's an, an artist in uh, Belfast. So again, like, it's locally owned. It's owned by its members, producing local independent beer. And then, like, for their canning, like, they're supporting local artists as well. Like, that's just incredible. It deserves a major shout out, like, major recognition. Fair play to Boundary up in Belfast there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that, that, that artwork is always really cool for theirs. You know, it's, it's, um, it's kind of, uh, I don't know, is it like, um, it's kind of like just always kind of like paint flicks and like really kind of cool just colors and stuff. Um, uh, well, but yeah, but it just kind of, it actually kind of like makes the, um, it makes the the name on the can, which is just in like a kind of like a, I don't know, an aerial or a Helvetica font or something on the front of the can just really stand out like, yeah. um, and it really kind of shines. It reminds you, do you know when you have stand a glass straight and then you just pour in straight down? It yeah. It reminds you of that splashing around. Good looking can now. Good looking can. But yeah. enough, enough about the praise now and all that. We need to, we need to put it through the mill. Go for it. So the Pilsner Proud, world fa- at this stage, world famous Pilsner scoring tool, as has been commented on by both Crack Beer Community and the Irish Beer Snob podcast, a world famous Pilsner scoring tool uh, featured on at least one other podcast. Um, the Ghoul and Jig. So Actually, if you're new to the Snowcast, we, we recently we've been doing this Pilsner Pro, we've been putting different um, lagers through this, um, and we're trying to basically find a beer that will match um, Pop Pilsner, which was this drink that we used to drink a couple of years ago before the brewery closed down. Uh, Jack Cody's up in, up in Dundalk, I think it was one, wasn't it? Yeah. So the Ghoul and Jig, basically, your Ghoul in is your shoulder. It's the Irish word for shoulder. And um, what we want to know is, right, it's a Friday. Quitting time and work, you're headed straight to the pub. How much does this drink get your shoulders going? How much is the hop in the shoulders when you come in and you clap your hands together and the fucking you're sitting at the bar and Tom Ryan puts down this frosty pint of very serious situation by Bromley Brewing down in front of you. There's condensation on the glass, the fucking head is flowing over, tipping over, dripping down the side, there's drool coming out your mouth. Right. Uh, I'd say, I'd say now, if I sat down at a bar and a pint of this was thrown out of me, I'd say I probably wouldn't talk to you for about half an hour. I'd be sipping away on it. Do you know what I mean? I'd, uh, so I, I'd go the opposite way. I'd would you? If I, if I managed to sit at the bar now and a pint of anything came out to me, I'd talk to you in two seconds because the pint would be gone. Oh. I, 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 I'd kind of, I'm kind of going from the, from the sense of I'd, well, I'm not much of a downer of a, of a pint anyway, like, but uh, I, oh, like, I, I, uh, what? For this point. Yeah, I'm just saying that I probably, I'd be so enamored with the thing that I just keep kind of going back to it, which I have since the start of this podcast, I've been kind of like literally been drawn to my lips. But anyway, that's not really the question. What am I talking about? It, that's nothing to do with it. How would the shoulders be kind of, would they be going? Ah, they would. Yeah, they would. They would. They would. I did. They be. They be. What? Are, what? Are, what's the scoring on this again? Five for sixteen, is it? Five for sixteen. Yeah. Uh, I'd say. Uh, uh, I'd say four for fourteen. <laughs> so. That's three fifty. You can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're paying. You think it's more quality, but you're going to drink less. Of it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I the, see what for from. the shoulders. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I can see why you'd be really looking forward to a gullet go of this. Like, mm. she'd fucking. Yeah, I'm loose. Your shoulders go going now, yeah. Because we we've definitely have had uh, ones that we've said are the kind of the settlers, the kind of um, yeah. the chatty ones. You know, they're kind of this is a, a quite day in the pub, like you know, and um, 
this is one now you'd kind of sip and have a chat about whereas this is definitely the opposite it's um it's not a settler it's it's a goer like you know um so yeah I, I, yeah you'd kind of it, I get the shoulders. I get them going. <laughs> Jesus, and they'll go. And they'll go. Yeah, four for 14. Uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, in that range. In that range. Four for 13, four for... Yeah, we'll go four for 14. Okay, cool. So, that's the, I'll, I'll, I'll mark the scores this week. Okay. Very serious. Four for 14. I think I need to update the, the spreadsheet as well from with our previous scores. Yeah. We should have done the spreadsheet as a Google Doc so we could access it no matter what computer or phone we're on. And then we could have like had a link open, a non-editing link for the for the for the fans they could go to whenever they want. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Say it's 2020. Speaking of 2020, it was a bad year. <laughs> bad <laughs> the quiver and quencher. We were hit with the earthquake and COVID. The quiver and quencher, right? So quiver and quencher is the inverse Richter scale. So if nine on a Richter scale is an earthquake at the equivalent of 30 trillion tons of dynamite. Yeah. Yeah, that's what? the figure. That's the same figure we use weekly, yeah. Oh yeah, it's fierce consistency on the podcast. <laughs> uh, what 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 equivalent earthquake of your lip would this quench? Um I don't know. I don't think it's as much of a quencher now as it is. A, as it is, a, it's a lovely, flavoursome, her- herbally kind of drink, isn't it? It's kind of a bit maybe. I don't know. It's a bit kind of sweet and like. Yeah, I think the hopping of it. Huh? No, no. I think it's the hopping of it. Mm. The fact that it's hopped, like. It's the malt you want. It's that pills malt you want to quench that thirst. And it's the hop for me makes it less of a quencher and more of a sipper. Yeah. Yeah. So like yeah, that quench, yeah. like to quench that, you want to pick the glass up and you want to shove your gob around it and you want your Adam's apple to do about four oscillations. Yeah. Whereas with this, you want to take a little swig. You want to roll it around your mouth, taste it, sip it. Because because this is why we're we're picking the pilsners. This is why we're picking the kind of laggers for this one. It's kind of, it's actually, today would have been the perfect day. We had the game of five aside. You're absolutely quenched out of it. Like, you know, the, and like you want to, or you're, you know, what would be, what would be your reaction if this was kind of given to you as your, as your quencher? On, on that day like you know yeah I think I think it's a it's a very good beer but I don't it's not a quencher I'd go with it's out of nine isn't it I'd go with like 2.1 yeah we'll go with that 2.1 yeah we don't have the scores of the previous one so we've not in the base at all like like you know that whole bohemian pilsner now that was a quencher no, the, you, clear, a you curious pills that was a quencher so there's this is different picture. characteristics yeah so the post pint gasp so you take your first week hold on one second now one sec let me ready myself let me get me so you're in the pub the boss the, bo- the boss the big the big cheese and work has been hounding you all week you sit down at the pub and you're oh jesus you're here for us up and you pick up the frosty glass with the head pouring down, as I described earlier, and you lift it up to your lips, and you throw the golden nectar back down your throat, and you place the glass back down on the table. <coughs> what comes out of your mouth next? Da. <laughs> Just that. <laughs> Just that. <da. laughs> right. I think you're being harsh. Am I? I think so. I think, I don't think it's bass. I don't think it's bass, yeah. But I think it's, I think it's both. That's, 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 or, or I think it's both. The apostrophe, maybe. <laughs> I think that's, that's, 
not even the full B. <laughs> yeah, but you're, you're saying the apostrophe, so we'll just say ah, that. We'll meet in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're not selling this beer at all, and it's a lovely beer. It's actually so good, yeah. But that's that's the fucking the, hey, this pills are probably a roller coaster. It doesn't uh, die, you know. Right, the jib of her. Oh, very good jib. Oh, hundred like, percent. Like this is this is definitely the most complex, I would say, pilsner that we've had. Yeah. Um, like there's a lot going on with it, and it's all good. But but for a beer that has so such, um, that has like a, you know, more than a two dimensional taste profile, in terms of jib, like. What you want, you want your pilsner to just be that lovely color, that lovely head, the well well carbonated. You want to look at it and think, I fucking love to drink that. I think this is a Stonewall five jibber. Five jibber, five jibber, yeah. No, it's, yeah. So, it's so complex. What you say? Right <laughs> from it's a three dimensional, is it? <laughs> More than a two dimensional. I don't know. I'm only fucking talking shit. It's like when it's like when you you're gone from um, Super Mario to Crash Bandicoot. You're getting a new perspective altogether. Yeah, yeah. Both have their both have their their pose. Yeah. Um, right. So five jibs. So she she's a she does a fine jib on this beer. Uh, so pokeability. Now, oh, and how would we describe pokeability? Uh, pokeability is um, the relation to um, the beer uh, puck pilsner by Jack Cody. But not only is it just the likability and the relationship to the beer itself, it's the way the way that beer made you feel, uh, the way you started smiling in the morning when you thought about it, the way... <laughs> The last thing you talk about at night. For moi, yeah. c'est très simple. <laughs> le pockability, c'est le, le quelque chose. Le, je, je ne sais pas. C'est le, le, <laughs> le vie en prose, le joie de vivre. Um, I fell. It's just that, un, it's that unquantifiable. We're trying to quantify the unquantifiable. Yeah. It's that capability of a beer to just be the beer you want when you see it even in the middle of a pack of lovely other beers yeah exactly yeah it's um do you know we, we, we talk about um uh stout season and you know sours in the summer and uh, pale ales in in the fall <laughs> oh yank and like but this is trans-seasonal. 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 Um, or omni-seasonal. Whatever. Trans-seasonal. Across all seasons. Transcends the seasonality. Exactly. Um, right. So, a very serious uh, situation. That's the name of the beer, not the current situation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On the podcast. Well, this is a very serious situation, though. Like, where does she lie on the puckability scale, as our friend Shane McNally set the scale on a score of zero to one hundred thousand? It, I'd say, it kind of goes. I'd say it kind of goes. Um, an upper middle, I'd say, uh, maybe around, yeah. uh, maybe around, uh, I think I'd be thinking about this for a while now. See, I can't, I can't decide if it's, I can't decide if it's an incredibly nice one can beer mm. or if it's, because it's 4.8%, so you could drink a lot of it, like, um, and it's lovely. And it's almost like that hoppiness, that, that bit of hop in it gives it a touch of an ale. Um, but yeah, 
Yeah, I I don't know. Like like puck pilsner, the puck ability does not nece- necessarily mean it has to be a pilsner. And this for me isn't the traditional pilsner. No, definitely not. Um, and yeah, I'm 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 I really like it. The more I think of it, the more I like it. That being said, yeah, I don't know. I I it's it's a very confusing beer for me to process in terms of like mainly because I don't have what the other scores we gave the other beers are in front of me as well. So I'm kind of like humming and hawing that if I give it a certain score, like, and if it's way ahead of you, curious pills, will I be kicking myself? Possibly. But I don't know. Out of 100,000, I'm going to say 50,001. Yeah, I was thinking 61,004, but um, yeah. So we'll meet in the middle and we call it 55,000 and three okay perfect great so that's that's a very serious situation it's gone through the the, the rigmarole of the pills and proud and um basically we're going to we're going to give you a bonus this week lads we're going to take a break now and we're going to come back and do a run a second beer through the pills and proud um we're gonna we're gonna bring another delight to your lips enjoy your this ears. ad for Island's Edge. <laughs> if Heidi can come on and start promoting that Island's Edge, lads, will you just fucking tell us? <laughs> tell us and we'll sort it out. We'll get on. We'll get on to the lads. Yeah. We'll get on to PJ. Right. Good luck. We are Morning back in, in the progress. room. Uh, yeah. It's, uh, Zoom has done this really weird thing where they've started telling you when you're recording. Uh, it'd be funny if that had appeared on the audio. Like, Recording in progress. <laughs> I mean, yeah, probably. You'd imagine it would, like, I don't know. It 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 throw me off a bit to be quite honest with you. I know, yeah. Uh, so we're back in the room and we are uh, going on further on our adventure of the Pilsner Pro, and we are heading over the river to. <laughs> to the UK and we're on Keller Pills by Lost and Grounded who are a Bristol based brewery um, DJ any any stupid facts about Bristol that you know yeah I have some great facts about Bristol you know that Bristol is the world's largest manufacturer of hot air balloons no why why would I know that also Ribena was invented in the University of Bristol in 1953 uh, at the National Fruit and Cider Institute. Um, the the Blackbeard, the pirate, he was from Bristol. Oh yeah, the first bungee jump took place in Bristol. Um, and also the chocolate Easter egg was invented in Bristol. Like, Bristol's done a few good things actually. Yeah, I've a I have a fact as well. Um, I've re- I'm reading a book on the troubles at the moment, and um, the Ra bombed it in 1974. <laughs> That's true. Also, the HMV dog was born in Bristol. Wow! In 1884. Good so The HMV dog is as old as the GA. Wow, he's looking there well. He is. Uh, it's also the home of Wallace and Gromit, Chicken Run, and Pirates, whatever Pirates is. And IMDB was created in Bristol. Wow, that's that's pretty cool. Uh, they invented uh, blankets. A wool merchant called Edward Blanket invented the humble blanket. Actually, here, I have a, I have a quick um, segue topic there for you, right? You're talking what? about IMDB, right? Um, how do you how do you kind of decide on on films or TV shows or whatever? Like, do you would you be kind of going down the ratings route or would you just kind of horse into whatever? Or no, because I I like a lot of shite, like yeah, you know how do I decide on films? Actually, an awful lot of the time it's um, through podcasts like Modern Escapism to talk about films and that. So I would um I would often watch a film um if them lads uh, recommended it. So like, uh, well, there was a film recently I watched that was really really good. Um, what's it? What's his name was in it? Uh, 
Andy Sandberg. Um, it was a, it was a, one of these really good time. Do you know, like it's really hard to do a good um, time loop films. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, in 2020, a film came out and they talked about a modern escapism called Palm Springs, and it was Andy oh. Sandberg, and he was just like we live in the same day over and over again. It was um, his like girlfriend's sister's wedding, and his girlfriend dumps him on the day and stuff, and someone else gets trapped in the time loop with him then. It's a really, really good film. Uh, so, yeah, listen to people like that. I'm, a, I'm an absolute sucker for seeing a film on Sky that I might have seen when I was like, you know, that I might have seen 15 years ago and thought, oh, I'll watch that again because I can't remember anything about it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, watching it then. So, yeah, yeah you, you've... you've um, I'd be kind of like that as well. I kind of find comfort in... Um, films i already films or well actually many films not really tv shows as much but films i have already seen where i'm like oh i know that's a good film now because do you know like with films it's like an hour and a half to two and a half hours or whatever of like your time so you want to know that you're kind of committing to something that's good like you know whereas like a tv show after like one or two episodes you can kind of go ah oh, this is a pile of shite like i'm not watching the rest of it like and you've kind of saved that time but like with films like I get I kind of I kind of get where you're coming from like that where you're yeah. like God I it's but like, like, I kind of remember this now and I knew I remember it was good like I'm I'm I, I watched this one again like, I watched Tenet because I hate the people who are tweeting about it hmm. and I watched it and I thought it was the biggest load of shite I've ever seen in my life No, your man I love your man the actor the main fella in it but I just thought it was brutal I, I actually fell asleep after it. I, I think that was kind of the consensus about that film as well, wasn't it? That it was brutal enough, like. That's good. So yeah. I wasn't alone, so. Um, I mean, yeah. like. And then I, I suppose for me, I would, uh, sometimes I'd kind of do the IMDb thing, you know, like, especially when you're kind of like, right, I want a, a like a big meaty series now where there's like a pile of um, series already, already for it like you know say when you went back and watched Breaking Bad or whatever yeah something like that where you're like right what's something that I've kind of I missed out on because of like it was big in the US and we never had it when we were like um when we were younger or whatever like say like maybe six years ago or something I watched The Sopranos for the first time or uh or, or even like Breaking Bad I only kind of I think I only kind of got on that when it, it was maybe like four seasons deep or something. I only kind of caught yeah. it then, like, you know. Similarly now, like, I watched Sons of Anarchy. When it came out first, I watched, like, the first couple of series. And then I kind of fell off it for a couple of years. And then I caught up, but I started back where I had been watching it. And I watched yeah. a bit. And then I watched the end, like, as it came out. And I loved it, but I almost feel like I it never... Like I I I'm mad to watch it back because it didn't make full sense because I skipped a couple I, I like I didn't skip any of it but I, I had a couple of years where I didn't watch it at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was that 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 that's the crack. Um sp- uh, speaking of stuff, oh oh we're gonna get into pills of proud before we get into the score and right. Lost and found it's Keller Pills. Uh what do you make of it? Uh in general. Beer- uh, the beer in general. Um, um, it's a it's a grand old York. Um, it's a bit of a kind of a classic. Like you definitely know it was an old brace of a beer. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a kind of it's that kind of bitter. Like you know it's. Um, yeah, actually, do you know what? Right, the can. We were talking about the can. It's actually it's a lovely looking can. Uh, to some that out rowing in the lake yeah and the thing about food. that though is that like it's just a little bit sneaky like I always find like <laughs> them them British cans like you know what I mean like if they <laughs> unless they're exactly. like the Bishop's Finger or something like that you know or or like St. George's you know thing I'm like ah oh, come on lads who do you think you are you know like that looks like brown ale. exactly exactly like this yoke it looks like a Norwegian fjord on the front. It of does it, actually. With a fella out in the, and you're like, like I would, I would, de- if I saw that, I would definitely say 
Scandinavian. Like even the you farm, said that. I said you that said before. that actually. Yeah. yeah, in in the brew in 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 uh, when we were in the plint, you said that's definitely Scandinavian. But actually, here wished there's Scandinavian stuff on the back of this here. Oh, what are they on? Oh yeah, two pants. Look, Stockholm Brewing Company. What's this? Imported care of Stockholm Brewing Company. Maybe, maybe it is Swedish. Maybe it is Swedish. Maybe the lads. Well, Brewers ninety one Whitby Road. What's going on here, lads? I'd say this. Do you know what it is? I reckon this is a Swedish beer that's been contract brewed in Bristol. Oh, you're probably right. Actually, we should have had some Stockholm facts. Oh, next time, lads. Do you know what? Right. Speaking about the can, right? It's lost and ground with killer pills. And then down the bottom it says hop bitter lager beer. If you've watched any um, if you if if you've ever watched uh um what you call it, like East Enders or any of those like British uh uh Nazi cons, what are they again? Soaps. Soaps. Uh you'd know that like they, you know, they just walk into the, the Queen Vic or whatever it's called, or the, the Lord Tilsley or whatever the name of the pub is, and they're like a pint of bitter, please, or a, a pint of lager, point, point, point of hop. <laughs> but, but like, it just, it reminds me, because it says like, hop it or lager beer. It just reminds me of that uh, Chumba Wumba song, Tup Tumpin. You know, he's like, he drinks a whiskey drink, he drinks a vodka drink. He drinks a hop drink, he drinks a beer drink. He drinks a lager drink, he drinks a beer drink. <laughs> I was like, really thrown off by that, but yeah. Uh, tasting it like so, the smell we know I love a good smell. Yeah, so, it, it, like, I want to go back, right? I want to go back. I want to go back to the soaps, right? Do, <laughs> you know the way that they say, like, can I get a pint of bitter or whatever, right? Yeah. That's kind of to do as well, isn't it? With like not having like products featured in the program. But no, like I think it's more to do with like the culture in most british pubs and like having cascades or whatever like right okay. what whatever okay. the pub has like that Fair. they ask for the style rather than then because I, I was going to ask like is like was this a thing whereby the like did the show influence or did did like say the culture or the society of order ordering beer did that influence the show or did the show influence the culture and society of ordering beer like it's just one of those like uh chicken and eggs never know <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows what came it's like the chicken or the egg what came first the bitter or the the hop the hop uh well I think I, I, it's this beer to me is it, it's bitter up front, um, like it's definitely bitter. Yeah. Uh, I don't get much hop. No. But maybe I'm hopped out from the one before. Say so. Um, yeah. But it is, I suppose, like the it's a less complex than than a very serious situation by boundary, but it's more traditional to me, like. Definitely, yeah. It's more, it's more classic. Let, let's, let's, let's go through the scale and let's let yeah. let the figures do the talking. Yeah, yeah let's the look the the look the prowl is foolproof. <laughs> it's goldproof. Absolute foolproof. <laughs> it's a goldproof prowl. Um, right. So, uh, what's this fella called? LNG grounded pill or killer pills. Um, so the ghoul and jig, Owen. Uh, ghoul and jig. Um, what's this one again? This is the five for 16, is it? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, I don't think it would. I don't think it again. I don't think it, uh, I'd be, I'd be running out of work. Like, I don't think I'd be, you know, hopping up and down, like, as if I'd hit a couple of speed bumps, you know, when I come out of work. Like, I don't think I'd be in that frame of mind going for it it's 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 more of a kind of a 
a laid back drink, isn't it? Uh, I would say uh, two for two for two for five. I would say. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. Yeah, like I was thinking, it's a kind of drink you'd have with a barbecue, maybe, or yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. There's that kind of thing that you'd have fucked out to the barbecue. Uh, yeah, two for five. Yeah, I go with that. I would say I was thinking two for six because I think. I was saying two for six purely on the fact that, like, I think the quality is there. Yeah. Um, it's just not. Um, yeah, you could definitely drink a couple of these, all right, though, couldn't you? hundred like, percent. Yeah. Two for five, so is it? Two for five, yeah. Great. Uh, the quivering quench. I think this is going to be this beer's strongest score, personally. I would say so as well, yeah. That bitterness is lovely for an old quencheroony, like. Yeah, and I kind oh. of get that um, that kind of like salivation bit in the inside of my cheeks. I'm kind of getting like this kind of weird. Got to get that looked at. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm getting this. I'm getting this lovely. Yeah, no, I, I, it does. It does. It doesn't get the ghoulins jigging. But it definitely quenches the quiver. I uh, does, yeah. Exactly. I, 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 I like wrote a nine, like so. I'd go with a six point eight. Yeah, that's a tremor, all right. Like that's a tremor that's been uh, that's after been quenched, like you know. Yeah, yeah. I'd go with a six point eight in terms of quenchability. Like I think it's a it's a right quencher now. That's why I was thinking barbecue as well. I was saying like a hot day, the fucking the the steaks are on the grill. Yeah. One of these wouldn't be bad in that situation. No, no, I, I totally agree with you. We're, we're better than a fucking island's edge. Oh, definitely, yeah. Oh, jeez. Could be good. Um, the post point caps. Okay, here we go. One second. Again, I think like for me, I think there's a good quencher, there's a good gasper, but I think that's where it ends for me. It is fairly fucking simple, lads. Yeah, I, I'd probably give it a that's bar. Maybe, yeah. I might even give it one. Would I even give it an S? Would I get a bit of an S? I don't think I, I don't think it's that good. No, I think I'd give it it's, a It is good, like, but it's fairly fucking simple, lads. Drink goes in, gas comes out. This gas is a that's bar. <laughs> that's bar. Yeah, okay. Let's go. Then ba bar. She's a sheep. She's a sheep. Um the jib of her. Um so and um, well, there was an awful lot of confusion around the can as well. <laughs> I just want to add that in. So Owen's given the can no jibs. <laughs> yeah. Zero jibs on the can front. Is it Scandinavian? Is it Tandinavian? We still don't know. Um and there was not much go out of her, like. No, no. Uh, uh, I don't know. Well, what's this five jibs? Uh, jib and a half, maybe. Jib and a half, yeah. Jib and a half. Jib gale. Uh right, pokeability. Ah, look. Like, it's a nice beer, but there's no fucking puck pills or like. No. Uh, like, je sais quoi. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> it's fucking ah like. Out of 100,000, puckability wise, probably about a 45. 45. <laughs> 100,000. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It does the like, but this is puckability. This is the, like, the ability for this drink to be your go to drink above all other drinks. Yeah. So, like, that, it just, it's, it's not. Like, it's, I hate talking bad about it. I'm not bad about this beer. It's a fine beer. It yeah, has its role, yeah. um, but it's n- it has no puckability though. Ah, you're being a bit harsh. I think. Are you forty six? <laughs> <laughs> what are you thinking? And and what's your rationale? I was thinking forty nine. <laughs> forty seven. I'll meet you in the middle. Okay, perfect. We'll do it. Forty seven. <laughs> Great. <laughs> 
Cool, cool, cool. That was good now. That's a very good quiver quench though. Like, you know, and in fairness, like it has, you know, I don't like talking down beers, but it, like it has its place. It's it's not terrible. It's not undrinkable. It's not like that fucking muck you were drinking at the start of the quiver, the, like earlier in the early days. Remember the day the Eucarious, we tried to do a different one each, made a yeah. muck of that. Um that uh yeah that that's what I was gonna say. I, I think um it'll be I- interesting the findings from our research uh to to determine um the pros and cons of the strengths and weaknesses or limitations of some of these spears, you know, that uh I think I think you know it it'll kind of sing to the strengths of some of them and we're, do you know what we need to do? Yeah, a lit review. No, we don't need to do a lit review. Nobody ever needs to do a lit review ever. Um, what we need to do is we need listeners to the, of the podcast to take the beers that we've put through the gauntlet and give their own scores and send them to us. Wait, what was if we do a Google Doc and could we do like have a have a kind of a I have one. One sheet protected, our sheet protected, or something, and then leave the lads kind of score away. We could do. Could do. Will we do? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? We're <laughs> bad at commitments. Yeah, I actually that'd be a nice little thing, like a little Google Doc database of like pilsners. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. We have. Uh, should we have the bases of it there anyway? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure, like it's it's a as we said, it's a foolproof system. Anyone can do it. If we can do it, anyone can do it. Um, Wait, here. Yeah, that was good. Now here's a quick one for you, right? Um, what's your favorite flavor of um, fruit pastille? Fruit pastille. Yeah. So my palate has changed over time. As a young lad, I was a fucking absolute sucker for the purples. Hmm. I love the purples and I love the oranges. Yeah. But as I'm getting older, I have a huge appreciation for the sour ones, the yellow and the green. Oh. I love a green now these days. God, that's um that's out there now. Um because yeah, definitely um I definitely would have been a big one, I'd say, on the orange and probably red ones when I was younger but now I think you're probably right that the I, th- I think I find the orange one a little too sweet now like there's no there's no nothing to cut out the the sugar in it like you know whereas I think yeah. you're right, the like the greenies the, them lime limey lads are good and the purple guys are 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 pretty good as well but weren't the purple so uh, popular at one stage that they just brought a roll of purple? Um, I think so, yeah. Or or the red, the reds, maybe the purples, yeah. Or was it maybe a purple and red one or something? Um, I have it up here. They brought out a pack of purples. A pack of purples. Yeah. Um, black currant is the purple, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There was um. Did this ever go around? Go through your um. Go around your school in, in back in the day. There was a rumor going around our school that all skittles and all fruit pasties were the same flavor, and that it was just a trick of your mind. Yeah, that went around us as well. Like, yeah, it was pure bollocks, though. I don't know. Or was it? <laughs> There's only one way to find out. The, the pastille prowl. <laughs> yeah. We just, <laughs> Imagine we just forgot about the pills of roll like, and just leave everyone hanging. Yeah, the sugar cast. Um, yeah, we're working our way through them though. We have another. See, the thing is, like, we 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 were doing the pills of prowl. We were like, ah, oh, yeah, we get our hands on six or seven pilsners. And then the moment we decided we do it, every brewery in the world is after bringing out a new pilsner. Um, oh, it's actually insane. Like, it's been it's been so good for us. Like, but. Um, it's it's put a lot more work on us that we were just going to finish off. But I think we probably have a good idea to, to for when we're going to finish. Yeah. 
Yeah, we do. But uh, that being said, right, what's interesting to me is the amount of pilsners that we've missed out on doing the recording on because of our tech technology and Wi-Fi issues, where we bought cans of really nice pilsners and just drank them. That's true, yeah. I, I, yeah. And as well, at the start of this as well, we also said that we were only going to pick ones that were going to be fairly core range like and you know whereas i think we've kind of diverted away from that because this was meant to be our replacement for our puck pilsner so i think we might have to at the end of this even though we've kind of scored a few we might have to discount a few i i disagree i think what we need to do at the end of this say for example if the end of us our, our conclusion is Hope's Bohemian Pilsner is the one to go forward. Say, like it may, it may or may not be, and we'll see. And we've, I think we've already had discussions in previous podcasts about maybe we were harsh or certain pilsners on the day, or you know, it'll be interesting to see in hindsight which ones haven't, which ones we might have scored harsher, but are more willing to go back to or have a fonder memory of retrospectively. But that's one that comes straight to mind. We could start a campaign to get that to become part of a core range for a brewery. A campaign. A can. Yeah, but you say that, but by the time the campaign gets started, we'll be back in the pubs and we'll want it on draft. A draft pain. A keg pain. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, look, we'll tr- we'll we'll try our best with whoever comes there. Like if it ends up being a limited edition coming out that we have to try and make it a core range, then, boy, Jesus. So next week's podcast, we have yeah. a guest lined up, who we've been in negotiations with for a long while. We're really looking forward to having them on. And we've agreed on a Pilsner that we're going to run through the mill. And I might have cheated because I bought this Pilsner we bought this Pilsner last week or the week before and the recording fell through and we had to rearrange to no fault of our own our guests and I had them Pilsners in the fridge and I had visitors down and we drank them and I'm really looking forward to it I have some big opinions on the next Pilsner and I can't wait to see what you and our next guest who I think is really looking forward to putting a beer through the Pilsner Prowl that they haven't had before, is going to say about this beer. Wow. Let's, leave, let's leave the listeners on a cliffhanger. I know, I was just, I was just thinking like... This you're, is, you're on a cliffhanger yourself now. I was like, this is like a Finn Dwyer War of Independence episode. Yeah, hello and welcome to the War of Independence. Next week... We're doing a Pilsner Lauren, War. Next week, I'll introduce Tom Barry as he shot a Brit in the head. Drinking a pint of killer pills. Pork pills. <laughs> he disguised himself as a Scandinavian pills. Right. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, guys, you know where you can find us. We're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Snowcast. We love your feedback. We love when you get in touch. Uh, we love the DMs. We love the emails. We're the snowcast at gmail.com if you want to get in touch with that. Um, we like like we, we had a month where we just had no Wi-Fi either of us really so we weren't as active on social media as we were but we're back tweeting nonsense again <laughs> uh, so uh, get on to us on, on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram uh, particularly uh, Twitter and Instagram send us an email and if you want to support us uh, we appreciate every bit of support we get as well to fund the podcast to fund us uh, getting better equipment for audio fidelity, which is hit and miss at times. Um, and as well, to, to support us, like, there's so many places we want to go, and and, and but, but the, the Patreons um, can enable us at times to go up, like we did the last call uh, series last year, when we thought the pubs were going to open up again with pubs from all around the country. And I would love nothing more than to be able to go to Limerick to Mother Max. Uh, and sit down with Mike and have a pint in that bar to go up to Swinford to uh, Marie Mellet up there and, and look at it and, and drink pints in a bar that's been with a family for 
you know, a lot of generations since the 18th century. We'd love to go up to Leash and spend a day uh, drinking on Bally Kilcavan's farm. Um, that's been with that family for 13 generations. And these that's the kind of contact we, the content we want to bring to you. So if you fancy giving us the price of a cup of coffee or the price of a can of uh, Lost and Ground Keller Pills Hot Bit of Lager Beer, uh, you can do that on www.patreon.com forward slash snowcast. And there's a couple of tiers there for you. Um, and and uh, it's much you appreciate. Um, if not, and you just listen to us, the only thing we ask is you tell someone else to tune in. Uh, it, it helps the pod all the time. And guys, thanks for sticking with us. We we had about a month there where we couldn't put anything out there. We're back now. We're back with a bang. And uh, the Pilsner Pro goes on. It certainly does. It certainly does. Um, and we're, we hopefully will have um, our next episode will be a Zoomer, but hopefully after that we'll be back in pubs and back meeting people and back chatting shite. Well, I know I'm opening up my calendar. We're in July now, aren't we? July, please, I'm on my knees. Yeah, next episode is Zoomer, and I reckon we can do a pubber the week after. Good stuff, good stuff. Um, and if anybody has um, any connections with uh, Centra Ireland, uh, we'd love to get them on the podcast to discuss <laughs> the Irish deli. They liked, they liked one of our po- tweets earlier, but I, I, I asked them to... Come on tonight. But yeah, nothing. Sure, we're bastards. But I don't think they, they don't stop Pilsners. The bastards. Yeah, we should, Joe will do. If we get Central Ireland on the pod, uh, we'll talk to them about chicken fillet rolls and we put it up on Patreon only. <laughs> <laughs> right, dads. Good luck, God bless. And uh, listen, whatever what you do yourselves, stay away from yourselves.